There's a lot of talk, mostly positive, but there's some negative talk about her being on the show. What are your thoughts about it? Like, I just think... Mm, Veronica Green is crying right now because I look so stunning. <laughs> Davina, it's time, baby. It is time to cross over. The crossover that nobody asked for, but we're gonna give it to them anyway. You ready, baby? I am so ready. You sure? Because every video you say, I am so ready. And then by the middle of the video, you're like, I hate this look, I hate this hair, I hate this makeup, I hate this, I hate the temperature, I hate the world. You sure? <laughs> I mean, I just hate the world. Bootleg opinions. Friends, when one video ends, just watch another one. It's called cringe viewing. I support you. And if y'all end up having a good time today, our memos and our PayPal's are in the link in the description below. Support pandemic drag! You know, I'm ready, but I still hate the world. Here we like to call bootleg opinions petty opinions because just like me and you, we're extremely petty. Now, meeting the cast of Drag Race UK season three, what do you think of the queen so far? They're young, right? There's a little bit of me that is like, there has not been anybody over 40 on Drag Race UK. And that to me is a problem because like all the queens that I grew up with, they really get what British drag is about. You know, they were all 40 plus. And most of those girls are still working now. You know, like we have girls in this country who are 70 and they're still knocking out a show. I love the young'uns, I love them, I love you all, but I would like to see some older faces on there as well. Girl, did you forget about yourself? You were the representation. I am not over 40. <laughs> Why would you erase yourself like that? I'm just kidding around with you. I totally agree with you that drag, it comes in all different forms, different race, different orientation, different genders, different types of mediums, and also different ages, right? Because when you don't see yeah. yourself on television, you to think to yourself, is the stuff that I'm doing worth it? Now, there's been many talks about a queen coming up who is an AFAP queen, and some people say that she shouldn't be on the show, which we'll get into later. But my part and stand is that she can be on it and that we need more representation on that. But we'll get there later. But let me ask you really quick, where the hell are you? Are you in prison? Am I in prison? I mean, it looks like it, doesn't it? I've got this crazy woman's face looking at me. Ooh, over there. I'm currently rehearsing for Chicago, so because I'm playing Mary Sunshine in Chicago. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm currently in rehearsal, so I've rented a flat in London, so that's where I am right now. I'm in this miserable flat in London. <laughs> Don't say it's miserable, because when most boys walk into your room, they're gonna get excited, because it's like the perfect apartment for a hookup. When you walk in, you're like, where are the furnitures? Where the Am I? I look like I'm about to get killed. I should have realized that it was going to be like this when I read, I don't charge a cleaning fee after you've been here. Yeah, no f man. It's a pig. Like, it's filthy. Everything is filthy. So, yeah, I should have realized when I read that and been like, oh, yeah, I see why now. I had a similar situation. This was during DragCon because, you know, they're very you know, very, uh, they love to pay us, so I, so I, so I went there, I was on a budget, like, I stayed at a $30 hotel night, I got there, the elevator wasn't working, the shower wasn't working, there was half a window, and, uh, I said, this is unacceptable, so I sent them photos, and I got a full refund, baby. Oh! <laughs> They call me Yuhua Karen Saki. And that's all right, because I am a scrubber. So I shall be doing that tomorrow. Speaking of traveling, now, uh, I was thinking this earlier. Yeah, see, we still haven't gotten to the looks yet. I was doing my makeup earlier, and I thought to myself, me and you get along so well, but we've never actually hung out in person before. No? Um, that should happen. That should absolutely happen. When are you coming to Manchester? Um, when America and the UK get their <laughs> together. Now, let me ask you, do you think we've met before at DragCon? I think we might have done. I think I might have come and had a picture with you because I tried really hard to get around to everybody and speak to people and have a quick picture with people. So I think we might have done, but I'm not 100% certain. You didn't come to my booth, I remember. I didn't. Why no. did I? What? <laughs> oh my God! <sighs> 
Oh no. But it's okay, it's okay, you're on food like now. We should do a whole photo shoot together. <laughs> We should, and I was looking through your YouTube. I didn't know you did a season 10 review. Yeah, I did. I don't know whether I was nice. Ah! I don't know if you were nice, but you were funny. And that's all I care about. You were entertaining. Okay, good. You were entertaining. It was sassy, good, shade, fun. Good, okay, good. That's what we like. Okay, season three of Drag Race UK. Here we go. First up, we have got Kitty Scott Claws, as in Kitty Scott Claws. Oh, did you see what she did there? Nice pun. She is also in Gals Aloud with Cheryl Hole. I totally see the resemblance because you're like, diva, yes, girl, sipping on martinis by the poolside blonde. Like, this is very Cheryl Hole. I believe you, I believe you. I think she is gorgeous, beautiful, sexy. Playgirl, how's Bunny? I love the shape, I love the latex material, I love the purple blue lines, mapping out her bust, her waist, her hips, and she's got this beautiful flowy cape behind her, and the hair and mug is beautiful. She's giving me blonde bombshell. Pamela Anderson, who? And her personality was absolutely hilarious. This is what she can do to win Drag Race UK, she says. <laughs> She's a good time girl. Nothing too serious in there. Like she's real gorgeous, but she's also definitely like kind of bunch of old school drag in there as well. Like she is just big, camp, loud, brash. And the outfit, you know, that kind of is that as well. A good time girl that she's got that latex thing going on, which is a little bit sleepy. And then the big shawl as well, you know, the kind of capey cloak thing that's a little bit Scottish Widows. I think she looks great and her makeup's lovely, like, and their lighting as well. They got nice lighting this time. I mean, UK season two had good lighting too, you know. Y'all were like sitting in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. Because I kicked the shit in the bollocks. Oh, you're not lighting me like this again. I mean, Drag Race Down Under, it was filmed like on an iPhone yeah. 6. Am I yeah, wrong? No, you're not. It was so <laughs> blurry. Next up is Charity Case. Oh my god! Oh my god! The dragon is here, baby. Now, some my question is this drag. And in my bootleg opinion, this is drag. It's not just about female impersonation anymore. It's about the transformation. Because I honestly believe, just like RuPaul said, you're born naked and the rest is drag. Now, most people don't realize this. When you woke up this morning, you did drag without even realizing it. The way you put on that outfit, the way you did your hair, the color shoes you chose, you did drag. And Charity over here decided to become a dragon today. And that's completely fine because the transformation is completely there. And I love the transformation with the purple all over the body. It's a complete look. The rhinestones, the makeup artistry, I absolutely love it. And this is Raja's season three winner's drag child. And this is totally giving me dragon tails, which is like a cartoon here in the USA. Love it. Who's the purple dinosaur? Barney. <laughs> if there was a drag Barney the dinosaur, this would be it. Like, I love it. I think it's great. I love the purple and the green together. I think that they work really beautifully. There's so much going on in this outfit. There is so much happening. And it's all been done really, really well. Placed in exactly the right spot. An amazing outfit. And she's come to fight. That's what it seems like to me. She's, she's come to fight. That means she'll last till top four, girl. Because, you know... <laughs> <laughs> if you're ready to fight, if you're willing to cause drama, girl, best believe you'll be in the top four, girl. I'm just kidding. Okay, there you have it. You have it. You as prediction is top four right there. <laughs> I mean, after watching so many seasons of Drag Race, girl, like if you're ready to fight, girl, they'll make sure you last the top four, girl. And I want to say a huge thank you to you for being here today because you mentioned to me that you are sick and huge thank you for being oh. here to be in drag and your presence to give us your bootleg opinions for me and the fans and also the cast members of Drag Race season three. I mean, I always prefer to be in bed no matter what's going on. That's always a preferred option. I kind of got flu, a cold, a cough and a chest infection all at the same time. I've done really, really well. But 
hopefully I can get it all out of the way now and then I'll be well for the rest of the year. Tip, coffee enema. I'm gonna shove some coffee up my <laughs> You've never heard of that before? I mean, I'll try it. I'll try anything once, darling. Why not? I've never tried it, but <laughs> it's American trick, girl. Coffee enema. Okay. <laughs> Does it have to be like ground coffee or can it be instant? Instant. Instant is fine. Instant is fine. I'll get that tomorrow. I'll let you know how it works out. <laughs> Next up, we have got Scarlet Harlot, who is in this gorgeous blue gown with a sash and this amazing hair that is like some kind of sculpted art piece. I know loads of people have got these wigs at the minute, but I just love them. I think they're amazing. They're like an actual piece of art. I haven't got any, uh, so if anybody wants to send me one, feel free. <laughs> Bootleg opinions is not just us giving our bootleg opinions, but it's us here begging for help, girl. <laughs> <laughs> she seems like great fun as well. I think she comes across really nicely in her video. Her makeup's lovely. I like that she's tied everything in with the outfit. I like the cut out in the front of the dress. And I like the sleeves as well. I like she's got that puff sleeve going on and then it uh, closes in on the arm. Gorgeous, young, smooth, baby. Every boy and girl wants her. Now this hair, just like you said, it is artistry right here. It's almost like she's got a crown on her head already. And the poofy shoulders, I love. And also the silhouette and the satin fabric is very rich, very regal, very queen. And the sash she's got on, it's like prom queen, but like mixed in with the drag version, right? Like she's entering a pageant of drag race, play quote unquote. And then she's got this crown, right? And I love how she ties in like the colors, just like you said, with the red, with the blue, and we see the hint of it in the earrings. And then the makeup to pop it up. I think she is beautiful. Body is snatched, here to slay. And the personality for being that young, amazing. Check. Check. You sound thrilled. <laughs> Check. Check. Yes, honey, bootleg opinions is pulling you out of bed because you're sick. <coughs> You know our work ethics is inspired by Amazon, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter what happens, you're going to work. And you're not having a wee break. Yes, but the good thing is that if you want to pee, you can go pee. Okay, great. Next up is Vanity Milan. Beautiful face. The hair is gorgeous. The gown is gorgeous as well. But I feel like they're two different looks. I think they would have worked better if they were worn separately because we see the feathers on one side but I just felt like it was interfering with the hair. With the hair like this, I think it should have been to one side and then we see the really big feather moment, right? And also I don't really get the half cut sleeve. I wish it was cut diagonal so that it seems like it's done on purpose so it doesn't seem like she's got a gown and she cut one side off. I think with the feathers, I think I would like for her to bring it all the way to the shoulder rather than in the front so that it doesn't cover parts of her face. But I like the fabric, I like the buns on the hair, and I like the fit of the gown. But I just think that there needs to be a little bit of manipulation to the gown and maybe a different hair to go with this so that it shows a little bit more of her face. Instead of showing the gown as the main focus, we see more of her face because she is the contestant, you know. Or if she's going to wear hair with this, I think I would like a different gown with this. Like a plume coming from the breast out rather than all the way up to the shoulder. The stuff is good. Like the dress looks like money. It doesn't look like, you know, cheap. I really love the shape of the dress. I really, really love the shape of the dress. That pop of the leg. I love a split anyway. I like getting my legs out. And so any dress that has got a split in it, I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm into that. I can't wear that color. I already look like I'm dead. Like I look like a gray lady. I don't need like orange making it even worse. It just makes me look like Oh, horrendous. But on her skin, it just is so beautiful. You know, she really knows how to dress for her body. It's like the small minor details, like the styling stuff, it comes with time, right? So I think that's where she's kind of missing. She does look beautiful, she does look expensive, she does look yeah. good, it's a well-made garment, but it's just a minor styling issue. Like, the wig is well done, the dress is well done, it's just, I don't think it correlates together. Mm. Next up is Chorizo May, and that translates to sausage. Bam! This is a fun look. It shows who she is. We got this fun green and this fun purple. The train at the back is huge, it's voluminous, and then we see it ruffling from the back to the front of the slip. My only thing was the size of the hair. I think she could have gone all out with the hair, make it a lot more bigger, just so that it proportionalized out with the shoulders, because the shoulders are really big, and also the bottom of the train is really big. But other than that, I think she looks stunning. 
and I loved her personality that she was showing off in the meet and greet, in the meet the queen. One of my very first gigs after Drag Race, she was there. So we had a nice chat. She's really lovely. I really like her. I think this outfit's great. I would have liked more detail on the green. So much space, especially in the shoulders, because she's got this gold brocade coming across the front. I would have liked a bit more of that across the shoulders. The Matador, Toreador, those kind of jackets have a lot of detail going on. And I just felt like I would have liked a little bit more like that. It was a touch plain on the shoulders for me. And then similarly, the hair, it's a little bit Lego. <laughs> it's a little bit Lego. Her makeup is so big, isn't it? Like she has big makeup. And then the wig kind of needs to proportionize that, doesn't it? If your face is huge, then you have to also have a slightly bigger wig because otherwise your face looks so massive compared to your hair. I think the dress is fantastic on her. And like you say, her personality is just, I mean, she's just so gorgeous. Now that you mentioned Lego, I can totally see it. It's almost like <laughs> someone playing Lego and she's just standing there so much as like, punch the wig on top of her. I can totally see it. I just want to see a little bit more volume. You know what I mean? A little bit more sculpted. And I can totally see that critique with embroideries on the shoulder pieces. I think that will really bring the look together so that it yeah. brings a little bit more accents of colors to the shoulders. But nonetheless, fun personality, beautiful, lovely. Gorgeous. Just minor tweaks, I would say. And the dress train, ooh, baby. Next up, we've got Crystal Versace. Now you've got to be careful how you say it because otherwise you're gonna get in trouble. It's Versace, not Versace, all right? Because otherwise she's coming after you, you know what I mean? Yes, honey. She's gonna come after you like the ghost that she is, girl, with like, <laughs> <laughs> So she's in this amazing nude catsuit, which is all stoned and covered in rhinestones. It's all harnesses across the front in this amazing orange color, and then big bits of tulle and frills and ruffles. I think this is an amazing outfit, and her wig is so clean. Like another drag child, somebody who is only about four weeks in and looks absolutely amazing. It's gonna be interesting to see how she fares in the competition, because, you know, I mean, 19, that's so much pressure on top of you at 19. But she's clearly a dancer and a performer, and I'm excited to see what she does. I think she looks fantastic in this. The ponytail is snatched, the ruffles around her collar. Also, can we talk about the ruffle train, baby? It's like five miles long. Stunning, beautiful. We got the harness moments, we got the straps, we got the chains, we got the nude illusion, and then we got the stones as well. 19 and looking like this, girl. When I was 19, girl, I was in the library looking like a bugger. Well, I still look like a bugger. Me too. <laughs> I'm not worrying about it, it's fine. <laughs> Little bitch. Next up, we have Victoria Scone or Scone. Whoa, we're about to have a fight right now. You are, how do you pronounce Scone? Scone? Okay, because Victoria says it's Scone. Scone? Yeah, an internal conflict in the UK as to the correct pronunciation of it. And for me, I use both. So she's in this gorgeous suit and then a jacket and it's got flames up the jacket I think it's done really, really well. And then she has this incredible hat that's paired with it, along with this white fluffy wig. Like all of the bits are great. The wig doesn't make as much sense without the hat for this outfit. I was just about to go there too. That finishes it all off. The whole outfit is big, like big shoulders. Victoria's got a very big chest, voluptuous in all areas. The hat just balances it all out. And the wig, unfortunately, by itself, doesn't quite give us that full effect, I think. I completely agree with you. I was just about to go there because when I first saw Meet the Queens, I saw her without the sombrero. And then after she put the sombrero back on, I was like, oh, this totally makes sense because without the sombrero, the hair was a little bit small. It felt a little bit empty over here, but the sombrero yeah. completely connected the look together. At first, when I saw this, I thought this was like paint, like ripping paint. But now that you mentioned flames and fire, that could be totally the case too. I love the shape and the color of these two colors on her. And you can totally tell that these earrings were made specifically for this look because we saw the shape of the yellow and the purple together on the earrings. I also want to point out that even the flames is completely stoned to match out the top. Now there's a lot of talk, mostly positive, but there's some 
negative talk about her being on the show. What are your thoughts about it? Like, I just think, why are you even talking about this, you know? Like, all of these stupid little gay boys who are like, oh, are you absolutely out of your mind? You have no idea about drag or its history in the UK if you think that cis women have not been doing drag this entire time as well. Of course they have. Of course they have. Because drag is about gender. You know, it's not about sex. It's not about what's between your legs. It's about playing with those different things and creating a transformation. And more than anything, it's about entertaining, being extraordinary. That's what it's about. It's about being extraordinary. What is it that you're doing that is pushing the boundaries a bit? Victoria absolutely does that. She is pushing the boundaries and she's fantastic fantastic on stage. Real old school camp ballsy drag queen. She's fantastic. So fun. I completely agree with you. We need representation. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video is that when you don't see yourself on television, you're going to think to yourself, am I worthy? Do I matter? Am I important in this world? And not just gay people watch TV, just FYI. Females watch <laughs> TV too. So when they don't see themselves on television, it's going to make them question themselves. I think that the smaller picture is, can women do drag, right? Can they participate in this art form? But I think the bigger picture is that, hey, can men become makeup artists? Can men become dancers? And can women become lawyers? Can women become doctors? Can women become drivers? It's about being inclusive, right? And I think that whatever you want to do with your life, as long as it makes you happy, you're good at it, that's all that matters. I think that's the bigger picture. But I think that when you tell people you can't do a certain thing or you can do a certain position in life, that's telling them, hey, you're gay, you can't become a lawyer. You're gay, you can't donate blood. You're gay, you can't have equal rights. And that's the same thing and the same analogy when you're telling someone who's a cisgender woman they can't do drag. I think that's the bigger picture. Absolutely. And the weird thing for me is when minorities do that. We've all had enough of that already. Let's. Let's move on. People are allowed to do whatever the hell they want. As long as you're not hurting anybody, it's all good with me. Unless you're ugly, you're hurting my eyes, then don't do it, girl. <laughs> I'm just kidding, girl. Victoria passed the test, girl. She's not hurting my eyes. <laughs> Have you seen that scene from Friends where Phoebe's like, she's like, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes. Do you know what scene I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but Victoria is not guilty of that, so girl, you can stay. Next up is Electra fans giving me Dragon Ball Z fantasy, baby. Wow, wow, wow. I love the hair, I love the makeup, I love the type of drag she's bringing. I don't think she needed that sleep though. I thought that kind of ruined it. I'm not as keen on the wig for some reason. I feel like I want it to not just go up. You know, like I want it to be rounded. The kind of points all the way round, I think. You know, I like the idea of what she's done as well. There's a story and an idea. She's been shocked and it's, you know, it's not just, oh, I need an outfit that's yellow and purple. What am I going to do with that? How am I as an artist going to interpret that and make it into something? Appreciate that when drag artists really think about what it is that my outfit wants to say. So you like it? This outfit today, gold, is saying that I am winning in my own life. Yeah, I was in the Olympics last week. I won. Lots of people don't know that, but I did. You got all of that from just one color? You better work. <laughs> <laughs> you better work. <laughs> okay. I don't mind the hair. I don't mind the hair. It's well done. My only thing, like I said before, was the sleeve. Mm. Like, I wish, like, it was almost like a dress shirt kind of sleeve. And then I want to see the shoulders up a little bit more, just like how she has it on the purple side. And uh, that's it. I think it would have been a better look. I think it was a little bit too much going on. Uh-huh. Our next one is Ella Day. This is polish. I think it's like a catsuit with a dress sewn over the top of it. That's what it kind of feels like to me. A blue dress with these amazing big boobs in the front of it. The neck is nice. The front bit is kind of open so that you can see the chest. And then there's like a big split along the side of it. So we get real high leg in there. Everything about this has been put together really, really beautifully. Where the stones are, the little details. I think it's a really lovely outfit. She looks fantastic. Her wig, her makeup, everything's gorgeous. What a I know, right? What a right? 
Um, I think she looks beautiful as well. We see the nude illusion and we see the huge fabric of the train on one side. And then we see also the details of the chains and the stones dangling on the bodysuit, right? And the nude illusion is done beautifully. Beautiful mug, beautiful headpiece. My one thing was the hair. It seemed like it was one of those Marcel wave hairs that she just kind of pushed to the side because we saw on one side of the hair, it just seemed like it was pushed back instead of sculpted back. That was my only little thing, but she is a beautiful baby. She looks cracking. You're yawning already? Yeah, it's been a long day. She's talented as well, isn't she? She's been in all of these different shows and stuff. I think she's one to watch. Next up is Anubis Finch. Wow, the Anubis hair Finch. giving me ladybug, poisonous creature, little insect. I am in love with this. My only thing was the collar. I thought it was a little bit too big. A modern take on Ursula. In the past I've been a little nasty. The octopus hands, kind of flouncy skirt thing going on. Like I like it, I think it's completely bonkers. The colours, they're a bit brash against each other. They could have been a slightly less diametrically opposed on the, the old colour wheel. Even though this is a crazy outfit, like I think she still works it really, really well. And her personality is gorgeous. And um, I don't know what the eye patch is about, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe someone shot in her eye. Maybe it's know. like a pirate. Yeah. You know what? Talking about the collar, I think if the gloves were a little bit higher, I think that would complete the look. Then I wouldn't mind the collar that much. Like a high 70s shirt collar. So it kind of framed her neck as well. So that it came further up. You know what? I think it's missing a piece in the back for the collar. That's what it is. Yeah, I think you're right. And I don't mind the two similar colors. I think she still looks beautiful though, so I don't mind it on that part. I think she looks wild. There's nothing sh to say about these girls, honey. I feel like it's gonna be a boring video. <laughs> like they've they've all done really f***ing well on this, really well. Do you remember last time we did Drag Race UK, the finale? <laughs> it was fun because there was like to talk about. This is just like they're beautiful. Wow, like there's nothing to pick apart. <laughs> No! Here we have River Medway, who's in this gorgeous purple and kind of aquamarine colour. A bit like a butterfly. I like this outfit a lot. I think it's well done. I think the boob is slightly too close together almost. Like it needs a little bit more separation because of the shape in the middle. There's something just weird going on there. And then the only thing that has kind of slightly irritated me with this is that her wings have slipped so that they're just like falling over to one side a little bit, which just one of those things that my eye was like, ah! if that was me, I'd have been absolutely raging that it wasn't absolutely dead center the whole way through. But I think she looks great. She sounds really like the girl from Little Britain. Yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, but. Sounds just like Vicky Pollard. I love this dress on her. And this material is hard to work with. I love how the corset built it into the outfit. And then we also see the colors on the wings as well. I like how the wings are almost like a collar for a backpack piece, but at the same time, it's also yeah. wings as well, right? I think what you're trying to say around the neck area was that I think the neck piece was a little bit too low, that it almost touched the bust area. So it seemed like they were overlapping, right? I think if she made the neck piece just a little bit shorter, I think they would have done the trick. And my thing with the hair, they could have shot up a little bit higher. So it seems like it's almost antenna. So I thought that would have been really cute. But nonetheless, beautiful, stunning, gorgeous personality and beautiful face. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Why are they all so good? Why is that? I don't... Fuming. Well. Them all. Next up is Veronica Green, your sister, baby. And this is her second time returning to Drag Race UK. And what do you think of this look, baby? Oh, I, Veronica, I love you. You know I love you. <laughs> I know where this is going, girl. I, <laughs> anytime anybody says I love her butt. Oh my goodness. This is a little bit prom dress. I had it in the cupboard. It's like a first drag look. Everybody else's look is kind of conceptual, whereas this is, Oh God, this is awful. But this is the sale rail at TK Maxx. That's what this is. I know that because I bought those dresses. I know that she's capable of so much more, but then I heard her talking today and she was talking about how, you know, she didn't have a budget to do the show again, which I mean, I fully understand because you spend so much money to go in the first time, then to have to come back and do it a second time. Like if you've not been able to work, which she hasn't because of COVID, 
then of course, where are you gonna get that money from? So, like I get it. Do I think that she can deliver much, a much better look than this? 100% yes, because I've seen it. I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go in, and then you talked about how she didn't have a budget. Now I feel bad. Now I don't want to say anything. No, you still just say it. Like, you know, Veronica knows what this is. It's not, you know, it's not personal, is it? It's not that you're a terrible person. It's just this dress is ugly. <laughs> <laughs> now that I heard you talk about her, she didn't have a budget. Now I'm just like, oh, I don't want to say it. Okay, but, okay. Um, the, Yeah, this dress was just very... Prom, a 16 year old. I went to Macy, JCPenney, I bought a dress. And then the necklace was, I don't know, girl. The necklace was like, I went to Claire's, I bought a necklace. It didn't seem drag enough for me and the earrings wasn't really there for me as well. But hearing your story and the side of how she didn't have a budget to go back and do it again, since she didn't work the past year, I can see it. I can understand. We all know how expensive Drag Race is. In normal times, it's really hard anyway, isn't it? It's really hard to just get enough of that stuff together. And then you put a pandemic on top of that and you go, okay, this is really, really difficult now. But we know that Veronica was saving a dress for season three. Um, and this, I'm hoping, is not the dress that she was saving since season three, because this is not, it's just not at the same level as everybody else. You know, everybody else has really brought it for these looks. And this dress is just a bit like, meh, I had it in the cupboard. Now, Davina De Campo, who is your favorite look from these promos? It's hard. My favorite look, I think, is Ella Vade. I think just because her makeup is so perfect, I love what she's done with her hair, and the outfit, God, she just looks, I mean, it's just amazing to me. Gorgeous, really, really stunning. My favorite look is Charity K's. Wow, blow me away with the makeup artistry and I think she looks stunning in this. And she's giving us a new type of drag. And my patrons have voted as well and they have voted for Charity K's as well. So come drag queens, come drag star two winners. Now Davina, thank you so much for getting out of bed to work for us tonight. And where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Ah! And grinder. <laughs> I told you you are you are the representation of the 40 and over girl. I told you you can't even remember your socials. And my name is Yuwa Masaki. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube under Yuwa Masaki. Bye, Davina. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you too. Mwah.